वेलकम टू माय न्यू प्लेलिस्ट दिस इज द लेट्स क्रैक एनपीटीई व्हाट इज एनपीटी इट इज द नेशनल फिजिकल थेरेपी एग्जाम द स्टूडेंट्स दैट वांट टू गो इन द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स शुड गिव दिस एग्जाम सो इन दिस लेक्चर एंड ऑल द अदर लेक्चर्स वी विल डिस्कस द एमसीक्यूज that are commonly asked in the npt exam and make this exam easy to go so let's start our playlist we discuss 300 mcqs with complete explanation this is the very important and very conceptual playlist so let's start our playlist clinical application of foundation science our first mcqs in each lecture i will discuss 10 mcqs our first mcqs is always do the mcqs my first advice always do the mcqs with conceptual basis don't pick any option without thinking so so let's start our conceptual and critical thinking a physical therapist is gross manual testing the trunk of a female patient who has a history of stroke the patient in the prone position moves into the direction of trunk extension patient in the prone move in the trunk extension with her hands behind the ears trunk extension include the following muscles a sept which is not trunk extensor we will tell which is not trunk extensor that is the rectus abdominis rectus abdominis is not a trunk extensor intraspinalis and erector spine are trunk extensors its explanation answer c is correct rectus abdominis is a trunk flexor it's also called six pack muscle interspinalis erector spine semispinalis thoracic intertransversale and multifidae are the trunk extensor these are the group of muscles that extend the trunk the patient who is able to perform trunk extension with the hand behind the ear is a normal result a poor result is characterized by moving into the direction of trunk extension as the arm follows a move is arm this is poor result so in this one mcqs we have a multiple concept first rectus abdominis is trunk flexors we discuss second we discuss groups of muscle that involve in a trunk extension and also the test she is performing poor result and the perfect best result next this second mcqs ankle and the foot are complex structures all you know these are complex structure that work together during the gait gait means walking pattern to provide the balance as the body walks over an uneven ground ankle and foot provide the stability the ankle joint is responsible for the following what is the function of ankle joint we will tell lateral adjustment stability forward motion or medial adjustments second and the third is correct stability ankle joint provide and forward motion what is its explanation ankle joint is responsible for forward motion and stability point number 1 foot joints are responsible for medial and lateral adjustment point number 2 ankle joint forward motion and stability foot medial and lateral adjustment at heel strike when the heel strike the ground the initial contact occurs at the posterior lateral heel at the heel strike initial contact occur at the posterior lateral heel at the mid strike weight of the body is behind the metatarsal head at the 
toe of when the toe of the ground the weight is mainly over the first and second metatarsal head so there are multiple things to remember in this first we have ankle joint function second foot joints responsible for medial and lateral adjustment at the heel strike phase mid strass phase and the fifth is the toe of phase each one mcqs give you the five concepts so remember this or note this carefully so you don't miss any important concept or incorrect if maybe ask the question related to the heel strike so remember all these things and note them and concept these things in your brain not for just remembering mcqs number 3 patient is referred to the clinic for cardiac rehabilitation program the history of the patient reveal a diagnosis of myocardial infarction myocardial infarction in which the middle muscles of the heart that help in a contraction have a low demand low supply of a oxygen wherever and their demand is increased demand increase and the supply of oxygen is low due to the heart muscle infarction involving the left coronary artery patient have a myocardial infarction involving the left coronary artery this artery divides into two major arteries left coronary artery divide into left anterior descending artery and the circumflex artery the left descending artery supplies which of the following this is the question the left descending artery supply the anterior ventricular wall so discuss the explanation the left anterior descending artery supplies the anterior ventricular wall option a is supplied by the circumflex artery lateral surface of the left ventricle is supplied by the circumflex artery and the option b and d sinoatrial nodes and the right atrium is supplied by the right coronary artery this note them ki which artery supply the which structure mcqs number 4 a physical therapist asked a female patient suspected of s1 nerve root compression to try walking on her toes this test aim to check for muscle weakness walk on toes check the muscle weakness walking on toes aim to test which of the following muscle of the lower extremity walking on the toes which one muscles will be checked is the flexor digitorum longus flexor means it help in flexion digitorum means it supply the it has a insertion to the digits and longus means it is long tendon it has a long tendon so discuss this walking on toes test for the flexor digitorum longus muscle this muscle also assist in foot inversion moving the foot inward it's also tested by flexor digitorum longus saltorius flex laterally rotate and abduct the hip what is the role of saltorius it's also called taylor muscle it flex laterally rotate and abduct the hip joint semi membranosus flex and medially rotate the knee joint semi membranosus is included in the hamstring it's flex and medially rotate the knee joint flexor digitorum brevis flexor is involved in the flexion digitorum means it insertion on the digits and the brevis means short flexor digitorum brevis flex the proximal interpharyngeal joints note them and remember forever next the mcqs number 5 a patient who has had a stroke is assessed by a physical therapist before starting a course of physical therapy on assessment 
patient demonstrate contralateral weakness contralateral means if one arm is effect one uh, if right arm is effect then the left leg is effect so this is the contralateral contralateral weakness contralateral sensory loss of the toes foot and leg and inability to make decisions he has weakness sensory loss and inability to make decisions urinary incontinence is also noted the artery that was most likely affected is depend upon this assessment we can tell is the anterior cerebral artery so discuss this anterior cerebral artery was most likely affected a stroke in the internal carotid artery injury is manifested by aphasia apraxia difficulty in the writing and the homonymous hemianopia if the internal carotid artery affected these are the manifestations in the patient a stroke in the vertebral artery what are the characteristics numbness weakness of the face dysphagia difficulty in the swelling and the facial pain a stroke in the vertebral artery internal carotid artery note them vertebral artery note them a stroke in middle cerebral artery is manifested by stroper rosiness and global aphasia also note these things next we will discuss mcqs number 6 that is the single nerve root can supply more than one peripheral nerves or you know because of this if pressure is applied to one nerve root the distribution of sensory or motor function is exhibited in more than one peripheral nerve distributions because they one single root can supply more than one peripheral nerves and nerves have both division sensory and motor so both is affected if the l5 is compressed if the lumbar file is compressed which of the following is more likely reported by the patient if the l5 effect note them low back pain that radiate to the upper buttock to the back of the thigh and to the back of the leg discuss this answer is correct if l5 is compressed low back pain radiate to the upper buttock back of the thigh and back of the leg is more likely reported by the patient note this if patient come with these complaints then l5 is most injured case compression of l5 may affect the sciatic nerve because the sciatic nerve have a L4, L5, S1, and S2 root value. If the compression of L5, we can also assess the sciatic nerve. Option B is manifested by irritation of saphenous nerve. What is the option B? Medial knee pain. If the medial knee pain, patient is manifested by irritation of the saphenous nerve, which is supplied by L3, L4. If the medial knee pain then the saphenous nerves we go for assessment and the option c and the option c hypothesis in the front of the thigh it is manifested by the irritation of femoral nerve why femoral nerve which is supplied by the l2 l3 and l4 femoral nerve root value is l2 3 and 4 and the d option hypothesis in the fifth and lateral half of the fourth toes then the manifestation is lateral plantar nerve which is supplied by the s1 and s2 we discuss all of the options in details next mcqs number 7 assessment of a 3 month old child reveal a palpable clunk when the left hip is reduced in and out of the acetabulum the child is suspected of developmental dysplasia of the hip developmental dysplasia of the hip with subluxation subluxation is partially dislocation which of the following statement most accurately describe a subluxation in the subluxation we will see 
it involve incomplete contact between the articular surface of the femoral head and the acetabulum femoral head and the acetabulum there is a incomplete contact in case of subluxation discuss this subluxation is the incomplete contact between the articular surface articular means joining surface of the femoral head and the acetabulum option a refer to the teratologic dislocation option a what is it antenatal dislocation of the hip there is a refer to the teratologic dislocation and the option b it describe and it describe the ability to subluxate the hip with the passive movements by the physiotherapist then the option b refer to the instability if there is a subluxation the hip with the passive movement then there is a instability and the mcqs number 8 is the cerebral cortex outer gray layer of the brain is mainly responsible for conscious activities of the cerebrum the cerebral cortex consists of four lobes how many lobes it consists of four lobes the warning area for sensory and speech is located in which lobe there is a warning area there is a broca area warning area is located in the temporal lobe here is a skull if here is we have a temporal lobe this is the frontal lobe this is the parietal lobe this is the back occipital lobe and here we have a temporal lobe the warning area for sensory and speech is located in the temporal lobe the broca area for speech is located in the frontal lobe the visual area is located in the occipital lobe behind behind i told you interpretation of the touch pressure pain and temperature in the parietal lobe write them or note them remember in your mind temporal area for the warning broca area for the frontal lobe occipital visual and the touch pressure pain in the parietal next the mcqs number 9 we have there are 31 pair of spinal nerves how many pairs 31 pairs of spinal nerves and 12 pair of cranial nerves that branch off from the spinal cord that move out from the spinal cord in the cervical region the nerve spinal nerve exit how many from the vertebrae in the thoracic spinal nerves exit and in the lumbar spine here is the question in the cervical region there is one above in the thoracic region two below and there is in the lumbar region three below there is a difference of vertebrae to the nerves is in the cervical one above thoracic two below and the lumbar three below what is it discuss in the explanation in the cervical spine the spinal nerve exit above the vertebrae if it is the fifth fifth vertebrae the spinal nerve is the sixth however the c8 exit below the c7 ho you can this is the example if there is c7 vertebrae then the c8 vertebrae exit from the below the spinal nerve exit below their equivalent vertebrae for example in the lumbar and the thoracic in the t5 spinal nerve if the nerve is for fifth exit through the foramina in the fifth thoracic vertebrae okay here is a difference we can see it's of one above nerve is one above if the vertebrae c7 the nerve is c8 in the thoracic we have a two below difference of 2 and the lumbar we have a difference of 3 and the last question the pain distribution of trigeminal neuralgia follow the sensory distribution of fifth cranial nerve trigeminal is the fifth cranial nerve which typically radiates to the maxillary branch it has three divisions occipital man, uh, maxillary and mandibular the maxillary branch is one of the fifth cranial nerve three branches 
This branch supplies sensation to which area of the head? It supplies to the side of the nose. What is the explanation? Maxillary branch supply the side of the nose. Simple. The front of the head is supplied by ophthalmic branch. Lower jaw and the bottom lip are supplied by mandibular branch. Three branches: maxillary, occipital, maxillary, and mandibular. The maxillary branch runs through the cheek, upper jaw, on the top of the lip, teeth, and the gums. Here are the MCQs, 10 MCQs with their complete explanation in just a simple language. Simple explanation. I hope so you like this video. Thank you.